The argument is basically that Hitler was a far-right radical, and therefore when we proceed to label someone as far-right, we think, oh wait, Hitler was far-right, therefore far-right equals bad. Here's the kicker, Hitler and the Nazis were leftists, and everyone that thinks otherwise has a far greater understanding of Occupy Democrats memes than they do Nazism. <laughs> I wanted to make another this type video this week, so I tweeted out some options for topics for you guys to vote on. This one in particular got the most votes, so if you're not following me on Twitter already, you should do so. I'm pretty funny on occasion. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out this segment. I used to stand in front of the bookshelf and I would talk, and but it's a hassle to move and then play the intro, but it's a hassle to move all the audio equipment back and forth, and the audio is never as good, so I don't know, but we're talking, right? I'm leaning back. I got two buttons undone, and we're, we're, the laptop's closed, we're just talking. So anyways, with this argument in particular, one of the issues that we have is we often make weak arguments. We cut corners intellectually. We'll say stuff like, well, if they weren't socialists, why did they call themselves national socialists? Checkmate, liberal. But it's like, then the typical response would be, are you familiar with the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea? So the name in itself isn't a strong enough argument. The best argument can be derived from the historical evidence that we have that describes exactly what Nazism was. So. First, let's talk about why people think that Hitler and the Nazis were far right. So, in the early 20th century, as socialism became more popular, Nazism is said to have been a reactionary movement of people that were against the doctrines of socialism and in favor of capitalism and of free markets. They cite that the Nazi party received support from many industrialists in the early 1930s, therefore, it must be a free market system of beliefs. This ignores the fact that the Nazis were openly waging a cultural war on the communists that the industrialists also hated because if the communists gained legitimate traction, the industrialists would be tremendously hurt by this. The enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. So, they also note that the Nazi party's economic policies in practice were different than Russian socialism since the means of production, entrepreneurship, and market exchange were under private ownership. The problem is, this is only a superficial system of private ownerships because through their system of economic intervention and control, the entrepreneurial function of the property owners was, I mean, it was completely controlled by the state. As a result, shop owners, they didn't have to speculate about the future for the purpose of allocating resources in the pursuit of profits. Exactly like in the Soviet Union, entrepreneurial speculation, resource allocation, it's done by a single entity, which is the state. The property owners were called shop managers, or the German word. I know it's Halloween, but we should invade Poland tomorrow. And the government tells these seeming entrepreneurs what to produce, how much of it to produce, at what prices and from whom to buy, and at what prices and to whom to sell. The government decrees at what wages laborers should work, and to whom and under what terms the capitalists should entrust their funds. Market exchange is just a sham. All prices, wages, and interest rates are fixed by the authority. They're prices, wages, and interest rates in appearance only. They're merely quantitative terms in the authoritarian orders determining each citizen's income, consumption, and standard of living. The authority, not the consumers, directs production. The central board of production management is supreme. All citizens are nothing else but civil servants. This is the socialism with the outward appearance of capitalism. Some labels of the capitalistic market economy are retained, but they signify here something entirely different from what they mean in a market economy. Sometimes they even refer to the Nazis as state capitalists, which I really just think is a way to be sneaky while still labeling them as capitalists. And the Nazis weren't trying to hide this at all, which is why it's so funny. The leftist historians maintain that the Nazis were actually right wing but Joseph Stalin actually helped feel this narrative too, my boy Ioseb. Ioseb, how do you pronounce that? But when the Nazis invaded the USSR, Stalin tried to redefine national socialism as capitalism, and he promoted the idea that they were in the final stages of capitalism, and national socialism was never Marxism, but it was influenced by the same German socialists that influenced Karl Marx. But since they didn't fit into the traditional Soviet Marxist worldview, they were referred to as capitalists, despite Nazis consistently implementing socialist policies and doing so quite proudly. The Nazis were fascists. So, what is fascism? A lot of people, when they think about the political spectrum, they think communism is the extreme left and fascism is the extreme right. And that's not true. It's so far from true. You'll see how ridiculous it is in a second when we break it down. So, fascism by definition is a political philosophy that exalts nation above individual, stands for a centralized autocratic government, severe economic and social regulation, and suppression of any dissent through force. Nazism added anti Semitism and eugenics into this as well, which is what is often thought to be the key difference between. Nazism and fascism. The Nazis were strongly against liberal democracy. What is liberal democracy? America, basically, in practice. Liberal democracy, which is also called Western democracy, is a representative, classically liberal government characterized by things like elections between multiple political parties, a separation of powers into different branches of government, market economies and private property rights, equal protections of people under the law, stuff like that. So you've got the Nazis. They're openly against free markets, democracy, li limited government, free speech, individu individual rights. I'm gonna slow down. 
but they're also far right. And if you look at the political spectrum that they pass around, it's actually mind bogglingly stupid. It's like a form of miracle. So you take a look at it. You've got conservatism and liberalism, and then you've got farther left. You've got socialism and communism. Okay. That makes sense because when you go from liberalism to socialism to communism, you're adding more and more regulation and taking more and more freedom away. So it's consistent. There's a trend. There's a trend that follows as you travel farther to the left. But when you look at the right-hand side, you go from conservatism to libertarianism, which is a substantial decrease in regulation and a substantial increase in personal liberty. And then what this chart literally says is when you increase personal freedom and decrease regulation, you end up with fascism, with a far-right ideology like fascism. How? How do you get further right adding freedom, shrinking government, and then all of a sudden the state is in control of everything? You lose your free speech. You lose your free markets. You lose your branches of government, your democracy. It's all gone. The trend as you head farther right is less regulation, and then it suggests that the extent of that so few regulations so few regulations it's actually so extreme it would be fascism which demonstrates a shocking lack of knowledge in either chart making or fascism who's the most popular libertarian we like ron paul we've all gone through the ron paul phase we've all got a copy of end the fed but the leftist academics are literally trying to tell you that the farther right you go ron paul ron paul wants income tax abolished federal reserve abolished heroin legalized if you get farther right than ron paul you all of a sudden sacrifice every principle that this country was founded upon every principle that the right wing in this country is trying so hard to preserve and then you become a fascist the reality is that if you were to place fascism on the political spectrum where it actually belongs, it would be on the left. That's the reality. No one with even an elementary understanding of political thought would argue that adding authoritarian control over the economy is a right-wing principle. It's just absurd. So what is right-wing? What does right-wing mean? What are, what, are, what are we saying when we describe something as right-wing? What do you mean by far right? What principles of right wing thought are taken to the extreme under this ideology? As you go farther left, you add more government control over the economy until you've reached your utopia where, oh, don't worry, everyone will do their part because everyone cares about each other. We can all make nice. Are those statements accurate? What exactly is it like to live under a totalitarian regime? Throughout history, we have seen the brutality that results from complete power being given to the state. Under a free market system, you can do that if you want. You can set up a living society like that. There's literally nothing stopping you. Under an authoritarian leftist state, you don't have a choice. You cannot opt out of the utopia. If you attempt to do so, you will die. And they spread the myth that conservatives are racist, and since Nazis are racist too, it adds up. Like, okay, so let's just assume for the sake of argument, all conservatives are racist. We're all white supremacists. If we are conservatives, if we embrace the principles of limited government, of individual rights, of free market economies, the extent of our racism is that we don't want you to live near us and we don't want you in our stores. Is that bad? Sure. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not really nice. It's not polite. But to compare that to the levels of anti-Semitism that the Nazis displayed is as somehow a symptom of the same bigotry is just astoundingly stupid. In a Western democracy, you have the right to be personally bigoted. Under Nazism, the government kills you. Do you see the difference? In America, everyone is equal under the law. You can get into the arguments, of course, about systematic racism and oppression. There's no legitimate evidence to support those arguments, but you can get into them. Under Nazism, you don't have rights, you aren't treated as individuals under the law, and you couldn't get into those arguments about whether or not the state is fair. Because if you did, they'd punish you, probably by killing you. The idea that it's somehow an extreme manifestation of far-right beliefs is just nonsense. If you align it on the political spectrum with where it actually is, it's not on the right, it's on the left. All the government control manifests on the left, and now all of a sudden there's this one section of the right that breaks the linear pattern and just happens to be authoritarian? No! This isn't hidden at all. The Nazis weren't ashamed of this. It's in their platform. If you read the Nazi party platform, it doesn't sound like what conservatives are advocating for, but it sounds a lot more like what the left is advocating for, likely because they share the same side of the political spectrum. I can't, are you really accusing the left of being Nazis? Like the whole point of this is a defense from the accusations that the left throws at the right for being Nazis, except this one is actually rooted in historical fact. I mean, this is all publicly available information. They call for the, the abolition of unearned income, the nationalization of industry, division of profits, welfare expansion, centralized education, and a duty of the individuals to the state, and a duty of the state to provide for the people. The points in the platform that the liberals will cite as evidence that, oh, well, Nazis are right wing would be things like, you have to be a German citizen to live in Germany, and that they wanted to prevent the immigration of non-citizens. The difference here would be that the Nazis only wanted people that were ethnically German to live in Germany, and conservatives just want people to come in legally so we know who they are. Same thing with the, uh, the other one. Germany wanted to stop the immigration of non-citizens, so do conservatives, but only because conservatives want them to do so legally so that they can actually become citizens. And liberals shared these views on immigration within my lifetime. It seems that they've only begun to oppose them when Trump began to advocate for them. 
you have you have the stereotype of the conservative racist, which in theory makes sense to some degree, because if I'm racist and I believe that my race is superior to other races, I would advocate for a system that allows for natural hierarchies to form so that my race can assert itself as dominant. But if I'm a conservative and I believe in those systems, it's likely because I believe in personal freedom and liberty and not the class warfare and identity politics of the left. I don't see myself as a heterosexual white Christian male. I see myself as a person. So I'm not too concerned with group identity at all. So it's tricky. But I mean, you've got studies from Yale that show liberals are more racist than conservatives. You've got studies that show liberals lower the complexity of their speech when they talk to black people. And, it does, and if, yeah. you, if you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? Oh. The stereotype of the racist white liberal exists too, and it's arguably more accurate. I mean, yesterday we found out that that Democrat delegate in Maryland referred to her district as the N-word district. And it's funny because if... If it were a Republican, the headlines would have all been, Republican calls black voters N-word, but they didn't want people to know that she was a Democrat. So they just wrote, Maryland delegate, blah, blah. And I'm sure you can find examples of this from people on the right. I don't think that racism is exclusively found in one party. I think it's a lot of it is generational. Also, I think it isn't just white people. Black people are actually the most racist demographic in America by their own admission. There's a 2013 study from Rasmussen that showed that, and they were actually one of the most accurate pollsters in 2016 as well, uh, when everyone, oh, we just got the numbers wrong. We just, we just didn't expect this. Were they lying or were they just wrong? I don't know. But anyways, the reality is that fascism and Nazism, both in theory and in practice, do not align with the right. They aren't right-wing ideologies. They certainly aren't far right. If anything, they're leftist ideologies. The whole idea of the political spectrum, it's very complex and it's hard to distinguish and compare ideologies based on economic freedom and personal freedom, but authoritarian leftism is Nazism. Authoritarian leftism is communism. And within the context of American politics, which is the context that this discussion is taking place in because we're being told that the modern right is an extreme and a form of Nazism or fascism, you cannot be both on the right and a Nazi or a fascist because the very beliefs that would categorize you as right wing go against the beliefs of Nazism and fascism. You might be right wing in the sense that you believe in free markets and individual liberties, but holding those beliefs and then also being a racist does not make you a Nazi. It just makes you a racist. In order to be a Nazi, you have to surrender your liberty to the state. Even the neo-Nazis are primarily characterized by their racism and their anti-Semitism. And then when you dig a little bit deeper, turns out they also want to do away with democracy, which ties back to the traditional Nazi disdain for Western democracy, which if you're a conservative, or a classical liberal, it's going to be a big problem for you. You cannot be both far right and a Nazi because the beliefs that you hold that would classify you as a right winger directly contradict the beliefs that would classify you as a Nazi. There are examples of right wing authoritarianism. George W. Bush, solid example. Oh, W was a great man. You don't have to defend him to me. He's probably got friends working in the DHS or NSA that are listening to this right now. He'll be fine. But and the point is, is that capitalism doesn't guarantee freedom. But everywhere that there is freedom, there is capitalism. The Nazis did not uphold any form of freedom, be it personal or economic, to use the traditional political spectrum as a metric. Nazism and fascism are substantially closer to communism than they are to any sort of right-wing ideology. And all three of them are authoritarian leftist ideologies that have killed tens of millions of people. Hey guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Really boost my self-confidence seeing all those thumbs up. You can leave me a comment. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of armchair historians in the comment section on this one. You can subscribe if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. And I'm not going to hit the bobblehead this time. because people, Why are you hitting Jesus? It's a bobblehead. Like you want to see it bobble. How else is it going to bobble if you don't hit it?